What is up, everyone? Welcome to the finale to Let's Play Maniac Mansion. Last episode, we had just made it past Edna, and we were looking for a way to open up the safe, so we need to find the combination. So, now the other kids have some legwork to do, while Bernard rests his back after carrying everyone else for so long. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Dave out front, what we're trying to do is to go into Ed's room, which is right next to Edna's. But first, I needed Dave in his original position right in front of the front door. Razor here is going to chill out and wait in a room next to Ed's room as soon as I get him up there. He's going to chill out there and wait. This is one of the reasons it's important to make sure you don't miss the package. If Weird Ed gets his package, he stops responding to the doorbell. But if you get to it first, he'll go from his room all the way down to the front door every single time you ring the doorbell. The other reason missing the package is bad, if you don't have Bernard, is because Dave and Jeff can't beat the game on their own. And Wendy, Sid, and Razor, they all need the stamps from the package to beat it. And Michael needs the package itself to beat the game. Now that we have rung the doorbell, we're going to wait about, I don't know, 5-10 seconds. You want to give yourself a little delay with whichever kid you have hidden before you head out into the hall to go into Ed's room. Here, we're going to try to open up the piggy bank. It's going to crack open. There are three dimes. They can be a little bit tricky to pick up. There's Ed going to the front door. That's fine. He's not going to take Dave to the dungeon. He's not going to kill him. He's just going to tell him to fuck off. Okay, so Beck is Sid, trying to pick up all three dimes. You only need two dimes, and I'll explain why shortly. I want to get all three here, and that will give me four dimes total, because I picked the other dime up earlier. Okay, now that I have that, I have to be a little bit quick, too, because Ed is on his way back up here. Pick the hamster up, and if you didn't catch it, there is also a key card the hamster was sitting on top of that Sid had to grab. Okay, so now I will come in here... Am I going up to... No, I think I'm going up to the, uh... The room that's hidden behind the paint splotch. So remember, don't use the paint remover in any other room but this one. Whoops, I have to be a little bit closer. Don't use the paint remover in any other room except this one. If you use it elsewhere, that's... That's gonna be a dead end. If I didn't explain this in a previous episode, and I feel like I didn't... To find a light in a room like a light switch or a lamp or something, you can use the white is command and hover your cursor around the room until the uh, the light switch pops up. Okay. Wait, am I missing something? Hold on, I just got really confused for a second. No, I am coming up here. Okay. So, I just want to get that out of the way since Sid has the paint remover anyway. That way I don't have to give the paint remover to Bernard. Now I'm going to insert all four dimes that I found into the coin slot. What this panel does is, you see it has a, a two different arrows, those are both buttons. They control the rotation of the telescope. You only need two dimes because you need to rotate from its original position, the telescope to the right, two different times. If you rotate it to the left from its original position, you get that cool little scene of the, uh, the alien freaking out. So, the reason I wanted all four is because if you rotate it to the left, then you need to rotate it three times to the right in order to get what I am looking for. Which is... 4186, that is the combination to the safe. And if you look at that combination, that number, before you have come up here and removed the painting, then you will not get the safe combination. You have to look at the, the number after you have removed the painting, which conceals the safe. Inside the safe is an envelope. I could distract Edna with the phone again, but instead I'm going to get Bernard caught and show you one of the two ways you can escape from the dungeon. Also, this line, this was definitely removed from the NES version. I should have tied you to my bed. I can't remember what she says in the NES version. It's probably just something really safe and sanitized. Yeah, you use the old rusty key. I got him caught. One, because I just wanted to show that off. Two, if you have that key, 
then it kind of acts as a teleporter if you need to get from the top of the house around Edna's room down to the kitchen, which is exactly where I'm going. And we're going to bring all the kids back down here. We're going to have... Oh, wait. Unlock. Front door. Key. Wait a minute. Unlock key with front door. No, don't do that. How the hell am I getting this mixed up? There we go. So all the kids are going to have a happy, fun reunion down here in the kitchen. Sid is going to be the last to join them from the telescope room. Bernard will be back in that room shortly, the man-eating plant room. The other room on the right, which you saw a, just a very brief glimpse of. Yeah, Bernard will head back there soon. And while I'm taking Sid down into the kitchen, there's something I really wanted to talk about before, but I didn't quite know what to say about it. But now I think I do. I think. So earlier this year, LucasArts was shut down by parent company Disney. After 31 years of making games, and with its closure, a bunch of really interesting looking games were cancelled. Uh, Kotaku put together this really great piece exposing the really terrible dysfunction behind the, uh, the, the curtains of the company. And I'll link the whole piece so you can read it for yourself. It, it really is a great article, a great little piece of investigative journalism within the, the games press. But the relevant bit is that it revealed there was a day of the Tentacle HD remake in the works. 80% of the way done, in fact. Day of the Tentacle, if I haven't mentioned it before, was the sequel to Maniac Mansion, and it never saw the light of day because LucasArts executives didn't want to make what they called legacy titles anymore. I actually don't really have a greater point to make about it. I just thought it was worth bringing up because, man, it would have been awesome to see a Day of the Tentacle HD get released. But, uh... Hmm. Maybe it could still happen if the right people got their hands on the license. Disney should own it right now, actually. Does Disney still own Day of the Tentacle? They should, because they were the parent company of, Luc of LucasArts. Uh, not a lot of... I, I don't have a lot of faith in Disney, though. And, as you can see, Microwave's on. Instead of opening up the package right now... Oh, yeah! You can microwave the hamster. The hamster is not important at all. I am going to use his remains for something that is not uh, strictly completionist uh, related. You'll see. Exploded hamster. Okay, now we will stick the correct items in the microwave to open the envelope up properly. You can just open uh, the envelope. As soon as you get it, you can just have Bernard tear it open, or whichever kid you have grab it. It will rip the envelope to pieces, which again, that will result in a dead end unless you're planning on beating the game with Bernard, because I think at least Sid, Wendy, and Razor require the envelope. I don't think Michael does, and again, Dave and Jeff can't beat the game. Bernard does not require the envelope intact, and even though I'm gonna beat the game with Bernard and not Sid, I just wanted to show off how to open the envelope up properly anyway. You're pretty much, it's, I don't know if it's completely obvious, you're steaming the envelope open, you're, uh, you're dissolving the, the adhesive with the steam. So you turn the faucet on, the empty jar that we emptied out earlier when we uh, fed the radioactive water to the man-eating plant, that, gave, that freed up the jar again, we filled that with water, put it in the microwave along with the envelope, turn the microwave on, steam envelope opens up and it's still perfectly intact even though we don't actually need the envelope and now I'm just doing a bit of inventory management so let's see yeah okay I have I think everything in the correct or with the correct kid uh, there's a couple things I want on different kids like I want to make sure Bernard still has the tools I want to make sure that Dave has the quarter Dave's about to go get some stuff that he's going to then give to Bernard. There's a bunch of stuff that... A bunch of inventory management I have to get out of the way now that all the kids are back together. Just because it'll save time down the road. And you'll see why having the correct items on the correct kids and the kids in the correct places. You'll see why all of that's important in a little bit. We're actually very, very close to the end game. We're actually getting the last few items we need to open up. That secret door that we saw earlier in the dungeon, that big padlock door on the left side of the dungeon. 
what we're doing right now is we're gathering the items we need to open that up. So the first step in doing that is I'm going to... Wait, which one drains the pool? Damn it. <laughs> okay, so the first one... The first step is to drain the pool. That did it. I saw the valve move. So we drain the pool and send Dave down in here. Dave is going to grab the radio and he's going to grab this glowing key. That glowing key unlocks the two padlocks on the door to the secret lab. And... Oh, and fun fact about the pool. If you drain the pool and send a kid down there and then refill it, that kid will drown. The kid who's in the pool. There's also a, uh, a big shiny red button you can push that makes the house explode. Let's see what else. Oh, also, since the pool is cooling the Edison's nuclear reactor, if you leave it drained too long, the house also blows up. Let's see, what other ways can you die, come to think of it? I mentioned... Let's see, I mentioned that if Bernard reads the security door keypad, the house blows up in certain versions of the game. Definitely the one I'm playing, I can't remember which versions that doesn't happen in. If you turn the power off in the basement and leave it off too long, the house blows up. Let's see, there's a part in the end of the game where you can die off, uh, where you can die of radiation poisoning if you don't pick a radiation suit up. If you play the mating call that broke all the glass earlier, if you play that for the green tentacle, it rapes you and you die. There's another way to get the green tentacle to kill you by getting a recording contract and then showing it to him. He gets really jealous and kills you. Uh, if you microwave the radioactive pool water in the jar, you'll die. And there is one more way to get a kid killed that I can remember that I have not yet mentioned because I'm just going to show it to you later. And, all, of course, all these cutscenes are going to play at the exact same time. I think a few of these are triggered by the the pool water draining, which is going to cause the rea the nuclear reactor to overheat, which is why uh, Dr. Fred is panicking. And then a couple of those just happen to line up timing-wise. So I want to get all the way out of the pool, make sure Dave doesn't drown with all these items on him. And then I will... Oops, already forgot which command. I think it's... No, it should be closed, right? No, it, it's one of them. Damn it. More cutscenes. Again, they're all lining up at the same time. Because the... Ed sends the tentacle down... Ah, damn it. There's too much. Too much going on. Ed sends the tentacle down to see what's going on. The tentacle goes, eh, there's nothing going on down here. He just fucks off. But we are going to go down there in a little bit. Oh, didn't mean to send Dave there. So the important takeaways from that are the glowing key and the radio. The radio is important because we're going to finally get good, fresh batteries out of it. Remember we found the old batteries in the fridge earlier? They aren't going to do us much good. I'm going to get Bernard back into the kitchen. We're going to do a little bit more inventory swapping. Let's see, I said I wanted Dave to have the quarter from the envelope. Dave has that quarter, I believe. I think the only things left I have to do... See, I have to give Sid the old rusty key in case he gets caught going down in the basement, which is the next step for what we're about to do to open up the door. Um, let's see. I want to give radio, or I mean, I want to open the radio and get the batteries, and I want to give the radio and the batteries and the glowing key to Bernard. He's going to need all of that. Actually, the radio, I don't think you need. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the radio is now useless. However, the other stuff I do want to give to him. Is there anything else? I'm just trying to double and triple check so I don't have to waste any time later sending the kids back and forth across rooms. Once I get them all in position... Actually, no, there's one... No, no, there's still one more thing I have to do with Bernard. Still, though, the kids' positions are mostly going to be finalized in a minute or two. I just have to send Bernard up to the man-eating plant room into the room uh, right beside that. The, that nearby attic with all the wires exposed. I'm going to send him up to fix the wires, and I mentioned that I was going to send Sid down to the basement. I'm sending him down to the basement once Bernard is in position, because I need him to sw uh, to turn off the fuse box and cut power, power to the house. Otherwise, Bernard will get electrocuted trying to fix the wires. The wires are... 
The wires need to be fixed or something Dave is going to be doing. So once Sid is in position, I will also get Dave in position in the arcade room. Or at least nearby. Oh wait, I need to send Dave out here. So Dave can push the gargoyle and let Sid into the basement. Okay, so those will be their mostly final positions. Not going to need Sid anymore after this. I'm not going to need Dave anymore. However, I am going to be using Sid for something. Oh, okay, so forget everything I've been saying about how their positions are pretty much finalized. Now, nah, there's still going to be a decent amount of moving around. Now, nah, there's still going to be a decent amount of moving around. Okay, Sid is where I want him. Bernard's where I want him for the time being. So... Oh, wait, I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, I did the same thing when I came back up here with Bernard. Oh, hell. This is not where I want to be. Wait. Let me just drag Sid over real quick to the fuse box, which is right here. That is also where we pick the silver key up in the very beginning of the game. Silver key, I don't know if I mentioned it explicitly, and it's kind of easy to miss things if I'm not pointing them out. The silver key was used to unlock the back door that leads out to the pool. Okay, Bernard's in his spot. I'm gonna turn that flashlight on and get that ready. There's a fun little bug with the flashlight. If one kid has it on and he's in the same room as another kid and you switch to the other kid who does not have the flashlight, uh, you still control the flashlight as if it's as if you're controlling the kid who has it. Okay, so now that the circuit breaker is off, we have the everything is okay alarm again. Everything's not okay. Son of a bitch. We have the same, mostly the same cutscene where Dr. Fred is panicking because the, en the, the end is nigh. The house is going to blow up and kill everyone within a five mile radius, so he's going to send the purple tentacle down to the basement to investigate. We're on a very lenient timer here. And then the worst that will happen is if the purple tentacle goes down to the basement and catches Sid down there, he'll just throw him in the nearby dungeon. But Sid is the dungeon key, so it doesn't matter. But all of that is pointless anyway, because the wire is now fixed. Sid can get the fuck out of here without getting caught, even if he does get caught. No big deal. Okay, so Bernard is done. Sid is kind of done. There's an optional thing I'm going to do with Sid in a little bit. First, I just have to finish getting everything put in its proper place to go into the end game, And part of that will be doing something I forgot to do earlier when everyone was having a little powwow in the kitchen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give the small key and the yellow key. I can't remember which I should be giving to Dave, so I'm just going to give him both just in case. Just gonna give him both in case Dave gets into a jam that will save me some time later on in case I screw up this next part with Dave. So give him the small key and the yellow key. I think it's the small key that I want to give him. The yellow key was, I think, the one that opened up the trunk of the car way back. But again, just gonna be cautious to give him both. I definitely want to keep the glowing key on Bernard. Now I'm gonna switch back to Sid because Sid also has something that I forgot to give to Dave. It's actually, no, I forgot to give it to Bernard. Sid has the key card on him, and that is what I want to give to Bernard. So I want Bernard, by the end of this, the end of this little get-together, before they split up again, I want him to have the old rusty key. Why not? I don't think that key is going to be important anymore might as well. Most importantly though, I want to make sure he has the key card, or the card key. And Bernard also has the glowing key on him now. And yeah, I think everyone has everything they need. I don't think anything else is important at this point, so... Let's see. Lettuce? No, do I want to walk to lettuce? I'll just give him the silver key. The silver key, I already explained what that was used for. Don't need it. Yeah, so I'm just double checking everything, making sure everything is in its proper place. Okay, small key, quarter, stamps. 
Okay, this is all that I want for Dave. I'm just gonna give him all this. I'm just gonna give Bernard all this excess bullshit. And then send Dave over to this room, which was the arcade cabinet room. Have I seen cutscene of. No, I haven't. Oh, shit. So this is a timed event. The way you get a combination that we're going to need in a little bit, which is, again, for that security door to the secret lab, the way you get the combination is you need the high score from the arcade cabinet. However... However, it's tied to a timed event. And what I'm doing with Bernard right now is I'm going to go get him caught again and get my nice little teleport downstairs. I want Bernard in the dungeon anyway, so might as well get him caught right now. Come here, Edna. Give me a big old kiss. You have to to get the combination I'm talking about from, from uh, the Meteor Mess arcade cabinet. You have to wait until after it's fixed. There is a timed cutscene where Dr. Fred will pop into that room and he'll play a round of Meteor Mess and you have to wait for him to do that before you can go play it yourself to get the high score, which again is the combination to the lock on the door. And I guess while I'm waiting to kill time, we will do what I was talking about with Sid. Fun little event that's uh, nice and wholesome, fun for the whole family. So where is, where are they? Please, sir, let me go. And we're going to show Ed, who is quite distressed about the loss of his hamster, the remains of his hamster. And if you do that, that is the final way that you can get a single kid killed. Yeah, he freaks out a little bit and just... You let your imagination do the rest. Okay, cool. Just in time for Dr. Fred to come in and play some Meteor Mess. Now I can switch to Dave. And Dr. Fred should not be in the room to catch you and send you to the dungeon, so that's fine. I gave Dave the old rusty key just in case that happened. I've never seen it happen before. So the reason we went through all that work to get the quarter sealed inside the envelope in the safe is so we can stick it in the arcade cabinet and it can munch our quarters. And the reason I gave Dave the small key from Edna's room is in case I screw this part up, I can open the co the, uh, the the coin box on the arcade cabinet and I can get my quarter back. But the combination for the door seems to be 8, 6, 4, 0. At least that was the high score I saw. Hopefully I got the right one. There's another number that I have to keep remembering, too. It was 0525, which was the Meteor Police number. Have to make sure I remember both of these, so... I'm gonna get this open as soon as possible and remove the chance that I forget this one. 8640. 8640. Come on, where is it? The numbers are filtering through my head, like grains of sand sifting through the hourglass. Okay. Now we can enter Dr. Fred's secret laboratory. Hooray! Oh shit, the purple tentacle is still here. Oh no, I forgot about this. The purple tentacle is gonna send me to the dungeon. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> I forgot that there are a few additional steps that we have to take before we can end the game. It's fine though, he just sends us to the dungeon. We've been here the whole time. It doesn't even matter. No sweat at all. So the last few steps that I have to go about doing, let's see, I have to call, I have to radio the meteor police from the radio. First, let me just open up the secret lab. I'm gonna be waiting around anyway, but might as well just get this out of the way because if you call the meteor police and the secret lab door is not open when they get here. Uh, they will go away, and if you do that too many times, if you call them too many times without opening up the lab, they will just refuse to keep coming back, and that will be another dead end. Let's see, I'm using, trying to use the radio. Do I need... Wait a minute, am I thinking of the right radio? I'm not. I was trying to pick, I was trying to get the, the batteries out of the flashlight and put them back in the radio we picked up. 
that's not the correct radio. The radio that you have to use to call the meteor police is the one that Bernard fixed earlier. So, yeah, this is why uh, there was an additional step that I was almost forgetting about with Dave. Kind of half kept it in mind. We have to get Dave down to call the meteor police in from the radio. Wait a minute. This is the right radio. This is the second incorrect radio I've gone to. Yeah, shit. Which room was that radio in? It was the pink room with the the first dime we found. I can't remember the position of the room, though. Okay, on the left... On the left is the room with the wax fruits and the painting. This is the exam room. I don't think it's on this floor, actually, because that should be the arcade room. So... Oh, I think it's the first room in the hall that had Ed and Edna's rooms in it. That should be the, uh, the, the black room or the development room, which is completely irrelevant for this playthrough because we don't have any character who actually needs it. There's the radio I was thinking of. 0525. 0525. I hope I remember that. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because it's on the wanted poster right near me. Okay, so... 0525. That's... Mm, now I'm gonna go read the poster. I don't think that was right. Oh, shit! It was. Awesome! Now we have radioed into outer space, interrupted this fine officer of space law who is pulling over a speeding lizard. You found the murderous purple meteor. We kind of haven't. We haven't seen the meteor yet, really. We've gotten a little brief glimpse of the meteor, but we haven't seen much of it. All we know now, though, is that apparently it's sentient and homicidal. Okay, so the Meteor Police should be on their way. This step takes usually about, I think, five minutes, so we're just going to wait around for the Meteor Police to show up. See you guys in about five minutes. A few moments later. Oh, shit! <laughs> that is a big-ass spider! Holy shit! Hold on. Christ. It's like one of those giant, like, Australian huntsman spiders. I'm happy I'm cutting all this out. It's the most thrilling spider killing on YouTube. <laughs> I'm tempted to leave my ordeal with the spider in. It's times like this I'm really happy that I subscribe to the New York Times. Killing spiders has never been so hassle-free. You know, that should be Legacy Media's new business model. Like, instead of printing actual news stories, you should just print incantations to ward away spiders, or print the extra heavy Sunday edition for maximum efficiency and insect control. Oh god, this is getting me thinking too much about the spiders exploding out of airbags and Toyotas. Oh, fuck this whole line of thought, I'm gonna go get something to eat while I wait for the meteor police. One eternity later. It, it feels like it's been- oh, there they are. I was gonna say, it felt like it was way, way, way more than five minutes. Because I had a, a, a harrowing encounter with a spider in that time. I went downstairs and made a sandwich and got some Pepsi. Hey, Pepsi, product placement. I want my Pepsi money. Yeah, I had that experience. Got some, some food, ate the sandwich. And in that time, there was still no meteor police. They have arrived, though. They've arrived to take... to just... disappear in one frame with the evil meteor that we've seen all of, like, five seconds of throughout the game. Now we can actually head inside, now that Bernard has picked the meteor police's badge up, or the meteor policeman's badge up. So you show that to the purple tentacle, the tentacle freaks out and thinks you are one of the meteor police, because, hey, you're green-skinned and from outer space, right? Now, you're just the local meteor police, stationed here on Earth to protect and serve, and pepper spray the shit out of college kids. And get paid for it. That's nuts. That is completely nuts. Remember in L.A. Noir how Mike and I were talking about how 
it was we joked about how we were getting paid and we were getting commendations for basically abusing the citizens of LA in that game. Well, this is just one of those cases where truth is stranger than fiction, because remember the cop who nonchalantly pepper sprayed all those kids who staged a sit-in at uh, UCLA? He got 38 grand from workers' comp for mental distress, following him hosing those kids down with pepper spray. He got $38,000 because he suffered mental distress. They just suffered physical distress, what with being hosed down in pepper spray. He got 38 grand, fucking out of control. And with the purple tentacle disposed of, or otherwise turning on Dr. Fred, Dr. Fred freaks out and activates the self-destruct sequence, and you at this point in the game have two minutes to fix it, had rather, we already fixed it. So you take the key card, swipe it, and go into the rightmost room where the purple tentacle was being held. You flip a switch, and apparently, whatever mind control had fallen over, Dr. Fred wears off. Dr. Fred deactivates the self-destruct, and you win the game! Just like that. It's a very, very abrupt ending that ends with a really good joke. And unfortunately, there's no credit roll. At least not in this version, and I couldn't find the actual credits, so I can't even read them off. I hate doing that. But that is Maniac Mansion. The other kids in the game all have unique endgame sequences and ways that they can solve the various puzzles that you've seen, and the ones that you haven't seen, the ones that are unique to them, especially the endgame stuff. So I would encourage you guys to play the game for yourself and see what those other endings are and how the game plays out with the other kids. For now though, be sure to hit the like button, favorite, comment, subscribe, and if you do not yet know, if you click on my name right below the video, that will take you to my channel where you can see hundreds and hundreds of videos much like this one, or with a more comedic, less informative slant that I do with my friend Mike. Got Brutal Legend going on right now, the next solo LP that will be going up will be Super Earth Defense Force, and that's going to be followed up with Mega Man X4, my 100% of Mega Man X4, finally. And that is going to do it for this episode and this Let's Play. Thank you guys, as always, for watching, and take it easy. Have a good one.